Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. And now, here are Bob and Richard. Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Our guest today is a sports better named Spanky. Spanky, welcome to Gambling with an Edge. Thanks for having me, Bob. Thanks, Richard. How did you get started gambling? So uh, growing up, I um, I learned uh, basic arithmetic with playing cards. My mother would teach me uh, just addition, subtraction um, using playing cards. And gambling was always around my family, uh, we, you know, whether it be poker or cribbage or backgammon, chess. There's always um, some form of gambling, whether we got it together around holidays or New Year's. Um, it, it just was always inherent in my family. And um and it kind of just kept going for me. Um, I never gave it up, so to speak. And, uh, you know, it's, I, you know, I taught a lot of my friends, just, you know, maybe eight, nine, ten years old, how to play poker. And I was, you know, I had my own chip set, you know what I mean? Where, you know, the, the rotating uh, chip set that you have. And, and you know, we were just playing different variations of games there. And it was just, uh, it was just always something that I loved doing. Um when so that's it, how I started. Yeah, go ahead. When did it uh, become like, oh, I can actually make money at this? Was there an aha moment? Yeah. So <laughs> throughout, you know, throughout college, I was reading a lot of blackjack books. I read a lot of your books, Bob and, and Richard. You know, the Gambling Wizards and, and uh, a lot of these books. A lot of these books inspired me, and I learned so much from them. And you know, uh, blackjack was was and poker were initial passions. Um, there was the Stanford Wong, the the BJ21 uh, forum, I think it was, or you know, there was black chip membership. So I would love to get involved with that. And I, I lived in I live in Jersey, I still do. So there wasn't as many opportunities as there were in other parts of the world. But I would always be fascinated. I'd love to be in that community and and share stories in that community and just listen. You know, I don't really have much to share. Um, there was a, a a late surrender blackjack game at the Claridge. Um, in Atlantic City, and that was, uh, you know, again, just part-time, making extra money on the cash for me, but then, you know, you slowly realize, my God, Blackjack, you know, the the the, uh, the variance in that game, you know, if you don't have uh, an adequate enough bankroll, you get wiped, um, so, you know, I, I learned that pretty fast, um, I got into a lot of uh, progressive video poker stuff in Atlantic City, what was the most prevalent uh, VP machines out here were the 16854 two pair of better Joker Wild machines. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, and, and they were always, there were so many, every casino had those. I guess that was the, the, the machine of choice in Atlantic City. So it was, um, and, and the progressives, whether it be quarter progressives or dollar progressives, you know, you could just do one, one walk right down a boardwalk and usually, you know, when Atlantic City was booming, there was always opportunity there um, for, uh, for for it to be a positive EV play, um, that game that game actually starts out at like ninety seven percent. Yeah, I know and, it's tough, and it has a sky high variance. So you're going to go through a lot of heaven and hell in that game. I did, and I did go through a lot of. But you know, I'm glad I, I went through more heaven than hell. Um, it was the only game of choice. You know, there were there were a few uh, jacks or better, but I don't think there were nine six progressives. Most of them were eight fives. So that's you know it just. And it took a while. I guess the, the, there were so many linked machines there. So, um, and then there was other there was other slot machines that you know there was wild cherry pies and double diamond mines. A lot of these banking slot machines boom. I remember uh, piggy banking, big bang piggy banking. Um, a lot of these machines also that I learned. I, I remember a book I I, I read um, back in like 2000 2001. It was Richard Lund. Uh, robbing the one on bandits. I think his name was Richard Lund. If I'm, I'm, I'm going to check, but right. yeah. yeah. And, and, and that, you know, that was an eye opener for me. Kind of gave me a map. You know, again, I'm here 21, 22 years old, getting a map thing of, oh, you know, wow, look, there's little gold mines in the casino. You just got to know where to dig. So I was into that, you know what I mean? And, and I enjoyed it and it was just cool, you know what I mean? I was with my friends and, hey, I kind of know where to, where to bet and, and, where the value is, and I was always fascinated with that because you know I, I went to school, I studied computer science and finance, and um, and I uh, 
I had like a, kind of like a math background. I'm not saying I'm a super, you know, mathematically inclined, but I did enjoy math and I did enjoy, you know, finding probabilities and, 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 and figuring out, you know, if this was the right move or not, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how that got into sports betting, uh, is, um, you know, one day I was just, you know, I was just like everybody else. I was just your regular, you know, weekend warrior bet on games that I liked, had my favorite teams and whatnot. And I, uh, I just was watching a basketball game one day and I, you know, I, I was just in my junior, senior year of, of, of college and I kind of learned, uh, how to be able to, you know, using, uh, uh, Java, the Java programming language to be able to get HTML source files, um, from the web and be able to parse those files. So I said, what if I did something with this with the sports betting? I'd be able to build like my own private ticker, so to speak. And I'd be able to get lines from different sports books and I'd have a program to be able to compare those lines. And if there was any discrepancies in those markets, I'd uh, search for those discrepancies. Or if there was any arbitrage, these, my program would alert me of these opportunities. And this was like back in like, you know, 2099, 2000, 2001. Where, where the internet was still relatively young, where the websites weren't the prettiest, um, and where the opportunities were fierce. They were just unbelievable. You know, there would be a sports book that would, you know, one sports book would have a, a five on a game, and another sports book would have a seven. And, and this wow. is not, yeah, this is not something that would just last for 10 seconds. You know, you could go make yourself a sandwich, uh, <laughs> Go, yeah, go, you know, go relieve yourself, come back, and it'll still be there. Like that's how, you know, nobody really being anybody's lines. Everybody was kind of br- was was around, but you know, wasn't. I guess not everybody was on Don Best, so you kind of didn't. You know, there was there's so many things. You know, I mean, there, you didn't know what you kind of knew what a few people had, but uh, it wasn't really as as relied on as it is today. So. um There was a lot, a lot of opportunity back then. So you have a good education. Mm -hmm. You you get a good job at a good bank. Yeah. And finally you decide to quit your bank job and go to work as a uh, full-time gambler. How did that go down with the people in your life? Yeah, you know, so I was just, you know – you know, I was I was still young, so you know I'd get advice, and, and I was just recently married at the time, and it was tough. You know what I mean? I, but I was I was gambling on the you know I was making more, and I had a really good job. I worked at Deutsche Bank. I was working right on Wall Street, seventy Wall, and um and it was good. You know, I, I was I was making you know with bonuses and everything. I was making six figures, and when you're twenty two years old, making that kind of money, you know, that's, that's, holy shit, you hit it, you know, you got, that's a jackpot, it's great, you know what I mean, oh, wow, I, I, my education's paying off, I'm happy, but at the same time, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit in me, seeing I could do more, I could do more, and, um, and I said, and, you know, I talked to my wife, my mother, it was like, what are you thinking, are you crazy, you know, you went, you went through, got this education, you're going to try to gamble for a living, like, are you nuts, you know? type of gambling for a living is even today it's still you know i guess somewhat taboo but it, it's the edge is off obviously but back then i'm sure you know you guys even heard it um it's like how how can that be it's impossible what are you you're gonna blow your whole uh, uh savings away and everything so it was tough but um i was making i, I you know i kind of went in gradually so i didn't start gambling full-time until about 2003 and I was doing it, you know, I was doing a part time on the side and I wind up making more money, you know, nights and weekends betting sports than I was on my regular job. And that's when I said, OK, I had a partner at the time and I said, OK, it's time to just go all in on this. Um, we're, you know, we've tested everything. We're good to go. Um, if we put if we dedicate, you know, 80, 90, 100 hours a week to this, we'll be able to even make more money. And, and that's what I did. I, I, I took the plunge and. I haven't looked back since. Very good. Now, you went to Costa Rica several times. Now, a lot of sports bettors have never been to Costa Rica. Why did you do that, and how did that benefit you? Yeah, so Costa Rica, um, most of the offshore operators operate out of Costa Rica. You know, at the time, 
um, you know, I played into sports books in Aruba, Belize, Curacao, Costa Rica, um, Antigua, Jamaica, uh, Macau. I know until this day, we're, we're all over the world. There's sports books everywhere. But Costa Rica was the main, main hub. And back then, post up w- w- was king. You know, when there was a payment processor by the name of Net Teller, most listeners would probably remember that, um, where, you know, you'd be able, it's like an online wallet, kind of like a PayPal. There was a time actually in which sports books would accept PayPal deposits, but that stopped. But um, Net Teller was the e-wallet of choice, where you'd be able to withdraw money from one sports books and put it into another. So early on, everything I was doing was was arbitraging, was hedging, was middling games. Um, and you know these guys were holding my money. So I said to myself, I'm like, you know, these guys are holding your money. You kind of want to put a face to a voice here, and and have you and, and meet these guys. Um, because, you know, I'll have an edge over anybody else. If these guys wind up going belly up and they only could pay a few players, I, I, if, you know, if I met them and we went out to dinner and I, you know, maybe I'd be still on top of that list where, um, they would wind up, you know, saying, okay, you know, Spanky, he's a nice guy. We met him. We don't know who any of these guys are. Let's pay him. Um, and that was the mentality. And I also, you know, kind of wanted them, you know, I'm dealing with these guys on a daily basis. So, um, you kind of want to know, even though, you know, I'm trying to take their money, they're trying to take mine, we still can try to find the common ground where we can all make money together. It doesn't have to be an adversarial relationship, um, the bookmaker better. So I met a lot of these sports books and, um, you know, great guys, you know what I mean? You know, a lot of them wouldn't be able to come back to the United States. They're still, until this very day, some of them that are, that are you know, would, are just stuck in Costa Rica. They can't really do much traveling. Um, you know, there's, there's warrants out for their arrest all, you know, and, 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 you know, this is not the, you know, these guys are, 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 are just bookmakers. Um, um, at the same time, you know, even though they're, they're violating us laws, um, when it comes to moral and ethical standards, these guys are, are some of the best people I've ever met. Um, very honorable, you know, it's an unregulated business. So, you know, 99.9% of the people in this business or the scum of the earth, they're, you know, they're shot takers or bad, but that 0.1%, in my opinion, are, are some of the best people you ever meet in your life. And even from that initial trip, um, back in, in, in 01, 2001, I think it was my first time I went there, I've been there 15 or 16 times since. And, um, I have friendships that have lasted till this very day. And, um, and I wouldn't trade those for the world. Now, when you started, um, were you only sports betting, or were you also playing the online casinos? No, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't doing any online casino stuff. I, I was just doing sports betting. But a lot of the sports betting, you know, back in the, back again, like I said, it was post up. So those the sports betting back then, they would offer these astronomical bonuses. They would give you twenty percent deposit bonuses, um, you know, and if you lost, you could call them up and you'd be able to get twenty five percent deposit bonuses. And they were just they were giving out money, and and you know all you'd have to do was, you know, you you know I was thinking, holy shit, I just you know I send them ten grand, um, all of a sudden I'll have twelve grand. Can I just withdraw it right then and there? You know, a dummy that I was. But of course, it was a rollover requirement, which was fine. You know what I mean? I was able to, you know, and whatever it was, a five-time rollover, ten-time rollover. As long as you bet that amount and you bet it through, you get to keep your bonus. So essentially, they're paying me for what I was going to do anyway. And um, and it was just it was unbelievable back then. The competition was so fierce. Um, so many of these guys, they had so many of these promotions and 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 you know uh, sports book promotions where you know everything was based on juice so there were sports books that had you know that would just deal like minus 107 i remember a sports book out of out of england called canbet that that used to just deal 07 as a standard um there were sports books that would deal minus 05 as a standard sports or loose lines i remember um some sports books would have promotions on certain days of the week carib would have minus 102 tuesdays on the nfl so you just lay 102 on everything um there was minus 05 fridays for certain sports books bet all world um rings a bell to me um and, and then there was some sports books that actually had no juice fridays that was the most famous one um and they went of sports market aces gold um and they had no juice Fridays on the NFL, and they were able to, you know, you could able to to buy and, and sell um, off the three uh, for ten cents. Um, uh, not sell, buy off the honor off the three for NFL three for ten cents. 
so it was just it was just a gold mine there. There was a lot, you know, and, and um, it, you know, some could guys you, offered. A, could you make God, both bets at the at the same place for? In, Absolutely, believe it or not, you could. You know what I mean. So they would have a three even on both sides. I could lay two and a half flat, take three and a half flat. It was insane. It was, you know, the the way it was, and 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 you know, they wind up going belly up, and and you know, thank God, my balance there, I lost a lot, but but not as much as some other people that I've heard over the years. Um, and that was the one thing. A lot of these guys would go belly up, but there was always a bailout. There was always a sports book to say, okay, we'll swallow the debt. We're now going to rock. Aces Gold, I remember, uh, a place called Bet Royal, who was originally out of Curacao. They said, okay, we're going to take over this debt. You just, we're going to take over your balance. You just have to bet it 20 times and, and you'll be able to get, you know, get your money. And that was like, you know, wow, thank you. You know what I mean? And then a lot of these things. I remember a place called Camelot Sportsbook. Um, they got bought, they were in Belize. They got bought out by, by Olympic sports. Um, uh, and another place called the Rich Coast Sports. I just remember they were bought out by the Bet Chris office. So a lot of these sports books, uh, were bought out if they did go belly up. So the, the industry kind of, uh, saved itself. And cause nobody, you know, I mean, it, even though if one sports book goes out of business, nobody kind of roots for that because you don't want to give a black eye. Um, to the business, you know, you don't want the, the word to get out that people are not getting paid and it's, it's inevitable. People aren't going to get paid. These guys are, you know, just a website and I can't, you know, me betting from the United States, I can't go, uh, file a complaint and go to a judge and say, judge, you know, uh, bet, uh, you know, uh, a website, I will pay you if you win.com, you know, didn't pay me when I won. Uh, what do I do? The judge will be like, what are you crazy? What are you betting with these guys for? You know, there's no jurisdiction here. We don't even know who these people are. So you can't really – it was self-regulated. There was no um, uh, regulations that we could use within the states. You just have to you know, follow your gut, kind of do your own due diligence, um, get references, find out are these guys good? Um, is the money good? Is my money safe? Go to these uh, posting forums, see reviews from other members. Um, to see if you know, hey, hey, I got paid here, or, you know, or maybe oh, I'm not getting paid. So you kind of like you you listen and learn um, to, before you go in. I'm not going to be the first customer of any sports book back then. Um, I kind of want to see uh, test the waters from somebody else and see how they and um, and then you go from there. So with the online gambling, I mean, with the online casinos. Um, it it was pretty much just a gold mine until 2006 when the um, Unlawful Internet Gaming Enforcement Act passed. Was that the same in the sports books, or did they kind of get their act together sooner? Um, well, yeah, it was the same with the sports books. When you say the online casinos, you're talking about bonuses or, or just yeah. a, a, a yeah, there okay. there was just tremendous money to be made with the online casinos because of the bonuses the, and and. You know, the bonuses in the online casinos were way more than what they were giving in the mm-hmm. sports book. You know, if you were getting a 20% bonus, some there were casinos giving out a 200% bonus. Um, Insane. You know, or and, and standard was 100%. Yeah, I never, I never, and, and or, there weren't live dealers back then where there, there was, everything was just all automated. Yeah, uh, there uh, were c- companies that were just starting to experiment with live dealers, but yeah, it was all software. It was all software, okay. And even though with even though the software w- was probably rigged, it still was okay with the two hundred percent bonus. I'm sure the hundred percent bonus. You were still able to meet the rollover requirements and just cash out. Well, uh, like you then. said, um, you had to do your homework and check out, you know, who has a bad reputation, who has a good one. Some places would stiff you. I mean, to this day, uh, you know, there are people who uh, still have those problems. Um, you know, they would. They, one of the things they would like to do is uh, come up with this word syndicate, right? So, and this would happen in sports betting as well. A particular casino would say, say there were a bunch of you all making the same kind of bets, and they would say, you guys are a syndicate, so we're not paying any of you. You know, so anyway, it, it um, occasionally there would be some software that was found to be cheating. You know, uh, they would get exposed pretty quickly, and then. Yeah, it's funny you say that. You said you guys are a syndicate. We're not paying you. I've had, I you know, I've had a sports book tell me, and and, and I quote: "This is exactly what he told me." He said, "All your winning wagers are canceled, and all your losing plays stand." 
and, and and I said, "Wow, H- hard to win that way." <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. So I remember that, and I remember, you know what I mean. And he didn't really have any recourse to like, well, who am I going to talk to? So then I would call one sports book up, and I, there was forums you could go to back then, and you know whether it be Major Wager or sports book review i don't know who it was you know what i mean who you went to but then you know they didn't want to build a bad name for themselves so the guy you know i guess one of the clerks was out of line and i wound up getting paid but um yeah it's it's uh it was it was tough you'd really have to do your due diligence and then find out if you were gonna um get paid you know when you won so but, did the unlawful gaming act have any uh did that have a big impact on the sports betting yeah, so when, once the, the Unlawful Gaming Act, I think, was enacted in, in June or something, I don't know when it came to June of 2006, um, <clears throat> that that January of 2007, I remember it very clearly because that's when Pinnacle stopped taking you. And at that time, Pinnacle was probably, you know, the sharpest sports book uh, for, for, for U.S. lines out there. So they stopped taking U.S. customers, um, and Net Teller stopped processing uh, payments from, from from U.S. customers, and froze so their you know, money. and froze their money. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and I had a pretty high balance there, yeah, so I, you know, yeah, I had to I had to go through a whole jumping through hoops, um, say that I was moving to Costa Rica. I had to get a, a a driver's license, a Costa Rican driver's license. I had to get a residency in Costa Rica. I had to send them all this documentation, open a bank account. Also, I could just withdraw my money. Um, and it was just insane. You know what I mean? What you had to do, there was no forewarning. There was no, okay, you know, you have 30 days to take your money out. Here it is. They just stopped. Um, so it was, it was a, a crazy time back then. And, and that's when, you know, the business started going more towards the credit side of things. Um, you know, I, I was strictly all post up. Nobody knew who I was. Um, so I posted up everywhere. But then, you know, the net teller fee started adding up. There was one sports book um, uh, out there that said, you know what, Spank, I'm going to give you some credit. We'll just settle up on Mondays. And, um, you know, I'm sick of, you know, you depositing, withdrawing because I would, you know, I'll be moving money around from one place to another. So, you know, and whatever free deposits there or free, all deposits were relatively free. But the withdrawals, you know, you might have two, three free withdrawals a week or something. So I'd utilize those. But these guys would still be paying the net teller fees. So they kind of didn't want to pay it. They, you know, they've already met me. So they said, okay, we'll, we'll give you some credit. And then that kind of like uh, snowballed. So I would get credit at one place. I'd, I'd get a couple of pays and collects under my belt. I'd pay these guys and then say, you know, I'd go to the second sports book and say, well, this guy over here gave me credit. Why don't you guys give me credit? They said, oh, really? So they'd call up that guy. Hey, is this guy spanky? You know, is his money good? Yeah, he always pays me. Everything's good. So then my reputation then – um, of just doing the right thing, you know, just being honorable. Um, you know, when you lose, you pay. It's just really simple. Um, and um, and and my reputation grew, where eventually then I would I would get credit at so many different sports books. So capital now wasn't even an issue. You didn't you know you didn't have to put up money. Everything was based on credit. Um, and and it was great. It was just everybody, you know. And then you would just settle up on Mondays, and um, and that's how it is today. You know what I mean? Every, you know, uh, there's very very few places, um, in the world that I'm I'm posting up with. Uh, everything just based on credit. So, um, in the beginning, it it sounds like it was really easy to make money. You had these middling situations, and you had these bonuses. Um, at some point, it got a lot tougher. And, um, and, and can you talk about sort of where, are you still trying to find arbitrage or, or, uh, do you, have you developed new, me- different methods or, or I'm assuming you're not just handicapping and trying to beat the opening line or, or are you? No. So we, we, you know, just like any, 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 uh, carpenter or any builder, you know, you have, you have a whole tool set, right? So we're still middling, we're still scalping games, but you know, we're betting games as well. And we're, we're taking positions where back then, um, when I was trying to build up my bankroll, I wasn't taking any positions. I was purely arbitraging and, and middling games. And back then, as you said, Richard, you know, at, at, at time X, there was positive EV to be had if you just executed both legs of a trade. In this day and age, 
um, you're probably going to have to take more leads. So you can't do things at time X. You're going to have to anticipate where the market is going to go. You're going to have to be able to bet something at time X and then maybe 20 minutes later, five minutes later, five hours later, if you're betting college football, five days later, you know, if you're going to close a position or buy back some of your position, you would do that, you know, towards the end of the week for college football or maybe if college basketball you do it closer to tip off um so yeah so it, you know the, the 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 opportunities at a given time are are are, are, are not there as uh, uh, as much but um they're still there you know i mean there's still money to be made especially um and there's still sleepers you know i mean guys are you know listen we we have our own our own quants and we make our own numbers on a lot of stuff but we're not just doing that. You know what I mean? We're looking at what other people are betting. Um, we see where markets are going. We see if there's a sleeper number out there. You know, we're line value shopping. Um, if somebody has a, a 17 and a half on a college football game and the world's painted 16 and a half, I mean, we're going to grab that 17 and a half. It's just, you know, and, and guys are, you know, whether they forgot to move their number or they want that bet, doesn't matter to us. Um, you know, the bookmaker hangs the number to take a hit and we'll be happy to give them that hit. So, um, you know, the opportunities are still there. They're just not there uh, as much at, at a certain time. Compared to other sports bettors, what makes you more successful? Uh, <clears throat> well, you know, I, um, my reputation, you know, uh, technology, I think we're, we're t- we, we focus more on technology. Um, I was, you know, I had an, uh, an auto bet a bot better um back in 2003 uh where you know it was unheard of to have something like that so i kind of used the technology background that i had to be able and i had like my own you know guys would have don best a don best screen which is a screen that would give you uh pretty much a snapshot like a bloomberg terminal a snapshot of what the prices are in in the sports markets um and there was off screen outs and on screen outs and if a, if a, if a, if, a, if you were going to go out in a game you would always bet your off screens first and then your on screens because if you bet your on screens first the off screens would copy the on screens and then you would not be able to get the line at the off screens so you'd always go bet off screens first and then on screens uh we had our own internal don best that i built that would w- pretty much had all the everybody off screen and on screen so I would see what the what the numbers the off screens were hanging up. Um, I would know when Billy Walters was going to go out in a game. When anybody, anybody, any who, who's who in this business, I would know when a line was going to move. I would know what the sharp side was, and um, and this is before I had any guys making numbers for me. We would know these things, and then we would be able to capitalize on these things. So technology, I think, was the biggest thing. Um, another big thing that that I think I. I uh, that I hold over uh, many guys as my reputation. Um, I'm known in the business as, as, as a good guy, you know, amongst my peers, um, bookmakers. I, I know uh, offshore respect me, um, or at least that's what they tell me to my face. I don't know what they say behind <laughs> my back, but I, I think I have the respect and, and, and the admiration of my colleagues and my peers in the business. And um, and I've never done anybody wrong. You know what I mean? I, you know, there's I've never. I've always done the right thing, you know, just do what mom always says, just treat others the way you want to be treated. It's just a golden rule. And and I've stuck with that and I've always just tried to do the right thing. And and that's and, and I know it sounds like you know just a basic thing, but that's you know, not everybody does that in this business. And um and I've always held true to that. You mentioned Billy Walters. He's uh although at the moment he's gone through a bad beat, he's one of the magical names in your business. How well do you know him, and have you ever worked with him? No, so I've never, I've never worked with Billy personally, one on one. Um, and um, but he definitely knows of me, and um, he, uh, you know, we've crossed paths a few times. Um, you know, I used to be prevalent out in Vegas a lot. I used to have runners in, in a lot of the sports books out there. And uh, a funny story, if you guys are interested in hearing it, um, it's um, I had a runner at the Mirage. Um, at one time and you know we, we would see all of billy's games because i you know my hand was on the pulse back then and billy would bet a lot of stuff in asia and he would bet again i remember i had my own personal don bet my own private don best screen so to speak so i'd see where the lines were going to move i kind of just knew what everything you know i, I that was like a big edge for me i kind of knew what was going to happen so i knew that billy was going to go out in a game 
So then I said, okay, let me let me uh, let me try to get this game and swipe this game and, and get a little bit for myself. So I had a little, I had a runner at the Mirage, and I uh, I had him bet the game for ten thousand. It was a college football game. So about five minutes later, uh, my phone rings and a buddy of mine calls me. He goes, hey, what's up, Spank? I'm like, hey, what's up? And he, he tells me, he goes, do you have a guy at the Mirage? And I said, why? And then he goes, is is his name Tom? And I said, uh, why, why are you asking me things? He goes, just answer. I'm just asking you. I'm like, okay, yeah. And then he goes, well, you know, uh, I got a word from Billy that he doesn't uh, appreciate you taking his place at the Mirage. That's his place. And I said, oh, shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like, and that's how, you know, it's like, number one, nobody knows my runner's name, okay? The only people that would ever divulge this information is guys that are working behind the counter at the Mirage. So Billy had such pull in these casinos, particularly at the Mirage, um, where he could just make a phone call, find out who took the bet. So the guy gave him my guy's name, and I guess it was kind of like, you know, Billy might have asked around who could this guy be running for, and, and it was me. So he reached out and, and passed that message along. And I was kind of shocked because it was like, holy shit, like, you know, just in, in, in with a span of five minutes – you know, I'm over here, you know, my cover, you know what I mean? You kind of try to be covert. You don't want people to know that it's me doing a lot of these things. Um, and he just found out in, in a snap uh, in an instant. Um, how, you know, how did you know that he was going to be going out on that game? Because I would see, let's just say he would bet the game in Asia first or he would bet the game at a certain offshore sports book, that, or off-screen sports book that nobody would know. So I, I know the movement pattern. So I let's see. just say – the plus seven there was one place that would go to six okay and nobody would see them go to six because they weren't on a dom best screen but i would see them because i would write i had all these parsers and i would be able to scrape everything and i'd see what these lines were everywhere so i knew he was going to bet that game and it just you know what i mean just learn now i wasn't i'm not i'm not going to blow up the screen on billy and because then then that's it then the gravy train's over i'll be able to get everything on that one play but then he'll know that that place had a leak <laughs> so i'd pick and choose my spots here and there and I figured the Mirage was a safe place. Nobody really back then, even it was you know not too many people were looking at a Vegas line. So I said, "Oh, it's an easy ten grand. Let me just pick it up, boom." And and, um, and lo and behold, you know I, I was caught red-handed, and um, and you know I and I told my guy, you know probably, and this was probably back in, eh, I would say 2009, 2010, you know. A 2005 Spanky probably would have told Billy to go f off and you know say you know that's uh, I, it was a free market and I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want, but you know uh, better heads prevailed there. I, I, I use my head and I just guy, you know you respect him. It's his play. I'm not gonna even if it wasn't his. You know what I mean? Kind of like he has such pull that I don't wanna ruffle anybody's feathers. So you know whenever I knew one of his plays um, till that day. Um, since I, when I was at the Mirage, I never, uh, would bet his play again at the Mirage. I mean, I respected his request and, um, and he just moved on. There's a lot lot of other places to bet into. So you talked about, um, that you developed these bots, uh, early. Um, did, did you develop bots to bet as well to go out and make bets automatically? Yes. Yes. That was, yeah, that was, um, you know, and it's funny because I still use, you know, of course it's, you know, we're on version, you know, 29.3 right now or whatever. So yeah, the, the, the bots, the betting, you know, just a click of a button, I can go out and, and bet thousands of places, you know, within a few seconds. So, and, and this is, you know, th- this, this is so much more important today than it was back then because back then guys didn't react as fast. There was so many different line sets. You could always catch somebody if a line was moving. Now, um, there's very few line sets out there, and 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 the limits now are so much smaller than they were. So you know, I have accounts where I bet literally a hundred dollars, um, and a, my betting partner takes fifty percent. So I'm getting fifty dollars on the game when I'm betting a hundred dollars on the website. Um, so you know what I mean? I can't. I, if I was going to hand bet that, it would be impossible. I, I couldn't go in and waste my time going in to try to bet a hundred dollars. Everything has to be automated so that I can bet as many of these $100 places as I can so that the aggregate would, 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 would come up to be something worthwhile for me to continue operations. All right. We're talking to Spanky. Before we continue, uh, we have a few commercials. 
The South Point has more than 10,000 gains, returning more than 99%. This is more than anyone else has. In January, Monday through Thursday, there's a $500,000 spin-to-win promotion. Play $500, coin in the slots, or 2,000 video poker, and spin a virtual wheel on your machine. All prizes are free play or points. Those points may be turned into cash or free play. Free play ranges between five and one hundred dollars. Points range from twenty five hundred worth seven fifty to a hundred thousand worth three hundred. Good luck on that one. The prizes are weighted towards the bottom end, but last year they averaged a little over twelve dollars each. This means uh, if you use a limit of four of them per day, but basically you can go in play for your first $8,000 coin in video poker on an even game, you can pick up 50 bucks uh, EV. I, now, there's uh, there's variance there. You can win or lose some money picking up that $50, but over time, you can't lose. The uh, It's a good deal. I will be there all 16 days of that promotion. Monday, January 21st, Martin Luther King Day. $32,000 hot seat promotion where every three minutes between 8 a.m. and midnight, somebody with their player's card inserted wins $100 of free play. This is not a very huge play. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people there, and the chances of you winning $100 are relatively small. Still, um, there is that $50 for your first 8000 to pick up. So... Uh, there's some EV here, so it's an extra reason to play on that day. The free video poker classes are finally here. Tuesday, January 8, 2019, they will begin at the South Point uh, Silverado Lounge, which is right outside of Don Vito's restaurant. The first class is Jacks Are Better. This is a 99.5% game which is a good introduction to several games later in the semester. It's one of the easiest video poker games to learn, one of the easiest video poker games to learn perfectly, and it's a great place to learn to begin your education. Uh, from 12 to 2, the class is introductory. From 2 to 4, we teach the same game at a more powerful level, and it's a good place to start. Videopoker.com is the best place to play lots of games. If you sign up for the gold membership, $8.95 a month or $79.95 a year, this allows you to get correction on many of the games. The game of the week is Wheel Poker Deluxe. This is a game where you pay an extra five coins per game, not per line. I mean, triple play pays 20 coins, normally 15 coins plus an extra five. Five play would be 30. Ten play is 55. And the bonuses come on dealt trips, full houses, and quads. Slightly different numbers for deuces, wild variations. If you get one of these bonuses, you spin the wheel. When the wheel spins, it lands on a drawing opportunity. Sometimes it's 100 play, four to a flush. Sometimes it's 10 play with a pair of aces. Sometimes it's triple play, four to royal, etc. There's no skill involved in the hold for the bonus. The bonus is earned on the draw, meaning there's no skill there either. So if you know the strategy to the base game, you'll know the strategy to this version, and it'll add an extra EV and variance along the way. All right, we are talking with Spanky on sports betting. We have learned so far that he doesn't want to mess with Billy Walters. And uh, you were saying you were playing a lot in Vegas 10 years ago or so. Uh, how are things different? Are you still playing in Vegas, and how are things different? No, no, no. Vegas now is um, – is um, the only time I play in Vegas is I'm physically there. I, um, You know, the Vegas market has completely changed – um, it's, uh, you know, the Vegas of yesteryear where, you know, you would be able to get down significant amounts of money, um, are gone now. Uh, it's, it's, you know, once the, 
the the Canada gaming CG technologies. Once everything changed there, um, you know, they, they were taken, they were the last kind of like big, big spot where you thought, oh my God, you know what I mean? This place, you know, they, they were taking 40,000 on a college football game on a Tuesday at 1130 a.m. Eastern for a Saturday game, um, which is astronomical uh, in, in, in today's world. Um, so th- those days will never come back. I don't, I don't believe. Um, and you know, guys now in Vegas, you know what I mean? You'll be lucky to get a few thousand here and there. And, um, the apps are, uh, are a lot of them spin out. You know what I mean? Th- th- what they'll do is they'll use, they'll use information, um, from, from sports betters, from sharp sports players to be able to just adjust their lines without even booking the bet. So, um, and the limits on the apps are so small, um, and you know you get cut, cut, cut significantly, that it just becomes, you know what I mean? It, it's it's just not not really worth um, pursuing. Have you moved into um, in-game betting? It's funny you say that because that you know that's if there was one thing we never did. Um, it was in game betting. We're slowly now starting to look at it. You know, I can't personally look at it because if I did that, I'd probably knock 10 years off my life, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the stress involved. But, um, but my guys, um, you know what I mean? They've, uh, some of my traders here that they've kind of, uh, they've kind of taken it on and, um, and there's definitely opportunities there. Um, but again, uh, most of the time, you know, the VIG is a little bit higher on the in game. And, um, and it, it just, it's, it's, you gotta have a knack for it and, and things are moving so damn quickly. Um, if we are doing any in game, it's usually during a commercial. Um, it's, it's never, you know, okay. I, you know, I, you know, in while a game is being played, you know, when somebody's running down the court, it just, the feeds, you gotta have an exact feed. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, with respect to sometimes a lot of in game plays, sports books, a lot of them cancel the bet. Um, if they believe, you know, you had a, a faster feed than them or if something, you know, they didn't adjust their price based on a certain play. So you kind of want to just do it when there's enough of a time. It's kind of like a halftime bet that happens throughout the game because we were pretty big into betting second halves. Um, and we still are, uh, for the most part, but, um, but it's just, a, a an extended second half where it just goes on and on, you know, uh, during the commercials. If some of our listeners are thinking of becoming a professional sports better and they ask you for advice, what would you tell them? Uh, you know, I would, I would honestly, I would tell them don't do it <laughs> just cause it's just, it, it's, it's the, 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 uh, the barrier to entry in, in this, in 2019 it's just so difficult. Um, you know, I don't know if, if there are, there might, there's still a few of them out there, the pencil and paper handicappers. Um, but you know, you, you have to have technology on your side and whether that technology is building models or whether the technology is being able to bet fast. Um, these are the most important things you want to be able to have, uh, the computer now work for you. We're in an age in a, and the technology era where it's, um, you know, talking and, and creating a dialogue for a game or, hey, I like this, I like that, I like this team because, the, the, you know, uh, all that's, for me, it's just, it's hogwash. Um, everything's based on the number. Um, and, and if it can't be quantified, um, then you're wasting your time. You know I mean? You could create uh, uh, an excuse for betting one team or you could create an excuse for betting another team and you could make valid points. Um, and you know, you, you have to be able to set a number and when you make a number, you're, you have to be able to bet for or against any team dependent upon your number. And then once you get good enough to be able to make a good number, um, the real challenge becomes getting down and not being chased. Um, that's, that's my everyday thing. You know what I mean? It, it's every day what I'm trying to do. And every Monday I lose accounts. You know what I mean? We play, we were just losing accounts constantly. And I try to also, so, you know, and, and you're just trying to build, build up the accounts because without outs, without accounts, I can't operate. 
if you know I could have the the sharpest model or I could bet the sharpest things and I know I'm going to win in the long run, but if I can't get down, um, what's the difference? Does it you know it means nothing? And you know I you know I truly believe, and there might be a handful of you guys out there, but you know th- there is no such thing as a, as a professional sports better that is exclusively betting markets and, and Las Vegas or any of these sports books. It's just, I know those markets and I know how they treat winners. And, um, and I, I know that, you know, if, if you're doing things right, um, and if you're trying to make a decent living at it, you're probably going to get chased. So, um, you need to, it's a cat and mouse game, just like anything like, you know, with, with blackjack card counting or with anything, you know, if you have an edge over these guys, you have to, you know, counting cards eventually becomes the easy part. Um, knowing an optimal uh, video poker strategy, I guess. It, it, once you know it, you know it. Um, the hard part now is finding these opportunities in, in which to apply that knowledge and to be able to last as long as possible before being detected and before t- them telling you to, to show you the door and, and not wanting your business anymore. And, and that's a constant struggle. And, and it's just so difficult. It's the hardest part of this whole business. Winning now for us is it's 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 trivial. Um, it's um and and winning becomes trivial for you know there's guys out there you know that are gonna get cross over that threshold where you're gonna be able you know you gotta at a minus one ten you gotta go over fifty two point three eight percent to break even. So it, you know it might not sound like a lot, and um and it's tough you know what I mean? but eventually there's gonna be guys that are able to do it. But in order to be able to do it consistently and to be able to last, um, you have to find places that will accept your bets. That, to me, is the most important thing. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. It's exactly the same for uh, blackjack and and video poker and probably every form of professional gambling there is. And and it's, it's a hard lesson for people to learn. Let me ask you, are there any books that you think are worthwhile for people who are interested and, and want to do something? Yeah, <laughs> there's, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of books that I, um, I know sharp sports betting, Stanford Wong. I remember, you know, that, that book is, 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 um, was a great book, you know, kind of showing you a lot of the fundamentals. Um, uh, off the top of my head, just trying to remember, there was Conquering Risk, I think, was another book that I enjoyed. Um, and a lot of articles, you know what I mean? Just reading articles and, and, and understanding things. Um, it, it, you know, you, you want to you know the business inside out. And, um, and you want to do it, you know, there's the articles that are written by guys that just write articles is one thing. You want to, you know, you want to read articles of guys that are actually professional betters that actually apply this, you know, you, you know, at least that's for me. I want to hear from the horse's mouth. How, how does this work? And most people that are actually doing this for a living are not going to be writing articles, right? So it's, um, or, or writing books. It's, it's hard to find them. Um, but there are a few out there. Um, maybe if I, uh, I might get back to you on that. I just don't have them off the top of my head, but, um, and- we, we could talk about those. And and what um uh do you bet? What sports do you bet? And what do you stay away from? So our biggest edge <coughs> is um is the college sports, college football, college basketball. Um, usually, you know, uh, the way it works is the the, the lower the, the the lower the limits are, the higher the edge. Okay, so there's guys that I know that are betting, you know. Dominican baseball, Mexican baseball, um, guys that are betting, you know, video games as e-gaming, e-sports, where the limits are not that high on these things, but there's a high return on these things. Um, and these guys just stuff, and God bless them. Um, we kind of stick to the meat and potatoes. We'll bet some of that stuff, and we have guys. We'll bet everything. You know what I mean? If there's an edge there, we're gonna bet it. But we're we're more interested in having an account last. Um, so we'll bet NFL, although I don't think I have an edge in the NFL or my edge is ver is slight, but it's one of those things in which, you know, if you're an, a, an American sports better and, and an NFL Sunday passes and you don't bet an, an, an NFL game, um, you know, you're probably, your account probably, and if you're only strictly betting Mexican baseball or uh, something, your account probably is not going to last long. 
and some people, you know, don't care. They just want to go through accounts. And I'm, that's not me. I kind of want to finesse an account. And instead of going right for the jugular, I want to slowly extract as much as I can. Um, you know, I'd rather make a dime a week um, for a whole year instead of making five dimes uh, for two weeks and then be cut off. So it's kind of um, – you kind of have to finesse things. But but the college sports – our biggest edge. NFL, we believe you know, it's it's so hard. Um, information is so prevalent. Um, the talent, you know what I mean. Uh, you know, it, it's not like in college where you can have a certain string of players versus the, the, your, your replacement player. There's there's big there's, there's a lot bigger discrepancies at the collegiate level on that than there is in the NFL. So um, with of course several exceptions, but it, just in generally speaking. Um, and, 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 you know, it's just, it, it, it's, it's an efficient market. Um, guys take big limits on the NFL for a reason. Um, and, and it's hard to beat. It's, it's hard to, you know, lay 110 and beat the NFL. Um, so we, we, we'll still bet it, you know what I mean? But, um, but we don't believe our edge is, is, is that big there at all. Now, in college football, now the season's over except for one game. Um, uh, do you like um, Ohio State? Is a um, there's a lot written about them, and so I would guess whatever lines they have is pretty efficient. But uh, Eastern Carolina is there's not so much written about them, and so whoever they're playing in Division Two or Division Three, I would think the edges would be bigger because the lines aren't so sharp. Is that correct, or am I just blowing smoke? No, it's 100%. Um, you know, there's uh, on your rotation schedule, you have your regular games, then you have your extra games. Um, in college football, there used to be added games uh, and then extra game, but there's just extra games. They call them extra games because not, not every sportsbook really hangs a line up on these games. And, of course, yeah, the edge is a lot higher there because, you know, there's not much media coverage uh, over it. And... Um, the less people are talking, the more research can be done um, independently, and the more line value one can find. So yeah, you're 100. You hit the nail right on the head, Bob, um, with that. Um, but again, you know, with respect to like the, a lot of people say, you know, whenever I tell somebody, hey, I bet sports, um, and then you know the next question is, okay, who's going to win the Super Bowl? And I don't, I, you know, other, I don't bet the Super Bowl. I don't, I don't, I don't. You know, I'm probably betting I own a Fairfield that day in college basketball or, or something. I don't. You know, uh, we, we might, we'll bet some props here and there, but we're not, you know, I guess it's like a pride thing. A lot of guys, okay, I bet the Super Bowl, uh, you know, that's the most efficient and the most, uh, you know, uh, thought out, thought of line. Why am I going to bet into such an efficient market? Um, I don't, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it doesn't interest me. The, the, the money I make is not any greener. If I bet a college basketball game, than it is if I bet uh, the Super Bowl. It's it's the same thing. Um, so you know, it's like it's such a misconception thinking that if, if you're a, a professional, that oh yeah, you have to know who the Super Bowl winner is or who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl. And and even you know me sitting in sports books, um, you know I don't I, I probably know, God I don't even know if I know five players in sports, um, in this day and age, I, I don't know. Um, you well, know. Tom Br Tom Brady is a quarterback. Have you yeah, heard of him? I, I have. You know, he's one I heard of. Yes, but you believe me? That's one of the five. You know what I mean? It's uh, and and you know, there's like I'd be sitting in a sports book, and guys would just be talking to me, and they'd make a dialogue. You know, they'd see me betting at the counter. They might see me betting, you know, a bunch of money. So then they'll try to pick my brain, thinking that I could offer something, and they'll say, yeah, you know, I think that there's motivation there, and they'll talk, and I'm just nodding my head. I'm not trying to insult the guys. But, dude, I, you know what I mean? Everything's a number. It's all about the number. I don't, you know, what you're talking to me about and, and all this thing, um, you're essentially just trying to convince yourself that this is the right thing. And, and why you're talking to me, you know, you're thinking, oh, yeah, minus seven's a play, but then the line just went to seven and a half, and, and you're still going to lay the seven and a half. It, 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 you know, I think the recreational guys today, they don't understand. There's too much talking, and, and there's not enough betting, in my, for me at least. You know, I was I, I come up where, you know, when I was doing this hardcore, you know what I mean? I would I would be betting and I would be in front of a, a screen in front of my computer where I'd be taking a piss in a jar 
um, where I wouldn't go to the bathroom, um, and I would just be glued to this shit. And this is this was my this is everything. Everything was on the numbers. I didn't care about what what writers would beat right, you know, uh, except for injuries, of course. But I wouldn't care. Uh, about what somebody's opinion is or any of this, I, it doesn't matter to me. You know, it, this is for the masses. Everything to me is is the number. If you get the right number, if you, if, and 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 you beat the closing number uh, significantly, you're gonna make money doing this. Um, and that's that's the period. That, that's a fact. You know, there's no if ands or buts about it. Um, so getting the right number on the game is everything. One of your posts on a Twitter feed said the secret to a happy life. Number one is getting the best number. Number two is taking a good shit. And number three was sex in that order. Yeah. It's was, funny. Go ahead. Revealing your well, there are times where the order is going to change momentarily, but, uh, how seriously were you taking that? Well, at the time, I was ta- actually taking a great shit, so that's why I posted that. Uh, I was stuck. On, I was, you know, um, yeah. That's when you. That's when you do Twitter. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so um, it's, um, you know, there is such a, you know, whenever I get a number, you know, let's just say I know there's an injury game, and if I know if I'm able to get down, and if I know I'm taking a plus seven on a game, and I know the lines are going to go to four, you know, in an NBA game or something. The, I, till this day, the, the, the you know you know there's a few sports books that I still call up on the phone, and when I when I'm able to get that confirmation and I hang up the phone, it's 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 it, the feeling that I have. It's honestly it felt I felt as if like I just robbed the bank and and nobody and and essentially the the teller is saying hey here would you like a cup of coffee and giving me a bag to put the money in and saying have a great day sir and I know nothing's gonna happen to me. It's one of those things in which it's such a rush to get. Get the best of a number, and that's never died for me. It's so it, it, it's it's because this is I, I just it, it's what I lived for. It's, it's it was my livelihood, and and it still is. Um, and I love it. I love you know looking at my chart and seeing my open positions and seeing what I have on some of these games, and, and then looking at the current market and knowing that my God, look, my guys crushed the number. I just went over one forty three on a college basketball total. The total is one forty nine right now. This to me, you know what I mean. It's it's it's. Um, I I don't know what else I could compare it to, um, you know, other than maybe hitting a royal flush or something. You know what I mean? But or you know, and that's just a momentary thing. You know, it's um, it's maybe fi- you know finding these these deals in the casino or these promotions where you just and, and they're giving you comps, they're giving you all this stuff, and you know that you're positive V, and they're welcoming you in the door. They're saying, "Come right in, Bob, and 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 have a seat." And you're like, man. So they're actually inviting me to take money from them. It's just, it's 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 incredible. Um, it's 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 one of the best feelings, and one of the best highs for me. I, I absolutely love it, and um and and it lasts for a while, whereas you know the other two, um, are just seconds. You know what I mean? Especially for me, the third one. You know what I mean? All I need is two minutes. I'm all right. But um, and 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 taking a good shit. You know what I mean? That's what, that's just a few, you know, just a few seconds. So getting the best of a number is, it lasts. It just, it just, it just stays with me for a lot longer and it saturates and, and I just enjoy it. Like it's kind of confirmation that, man, I still, I still got this business. I still know what I'm doing. I'm still able to, you know, earn for myself and my family. And, you know, I, um, Kind of gives me the confirmation that I need, self confirmation that yep, you know I, I'm 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 still a major player in the game. That seems like a perfect place for us to uh, end it today. Uh huh. Um, but uh, Spanky, you you uh, you'll have to come back because we have a lot more questions for you. Oh no problem, guys. It's my, my and I you know. I uh, I appreciate you guys having me on. You guys are, you know, I've read a lot of all your books, and you, I'm big fans of you guys. And you guys are pioneers in the business, um, and it's really an honor to to for you guys to even consider to to have me on. So, if our listeners, Richard, uh, want to ask questions to Spanky for the next time he's on, uh, subject to, of course, if he doesn't want to answer them, 
it's not going to make the cut. But uh, if, how do they go about doing that, Richard? You can email them to us at gamblingwithanedge at gmail.com. Or there's a, a, th- a thread on Twitter right now. <clears throat> I'm at, at RWM21. Uh, so either of those, or you can uh, post it in the comments section uh, at gamblingwithanedge.com. Once I post this, uh, you can just put it there in the comments section. All right. By the time they hear it, you will have posted it. So you can do that right now. Uh, right. Uh, thank you very much, Spanky. Thank you, Richard. Go out and hit a royal flush, everybody, and get a good number while you're doing it. Thank you. Good day. Thank you.